of all, the word uh, knee replacement itself is a misnomer. It should actually be called as knee resurfacing because in re knee replacement, we actually re replace the surface, that is the distal part of the femur and the proximal tibia. Um, knee replacement has come a long way. It used to be, say, about three decades ago. It would last, say, only about 10 years or so. But now it lasts 20 years plus, especially with the latest metals like oxenium. Um, so, um, and of course, in India, we should be thankful to our XPM watch by for popularizing it. Now, uh, as far as knee replacement, what is computer-assisted surgery? We all know what is knee replacement. Why this talk about computer-assisted surgery? I always um, make people understand this in a very simple way. Like, if you have a punch, if you need, if your tire is worn out in your car and you need to replace it, you take it to the petrol bunk and you say, don't just replace the tire using your naked eye, but use the computerized alignment and balancing in order to change the tire. Now, why would we do that? That's exactly because you want an excellently good fit. So today, in the course of my talk, I'll just explain what is the basics of computer navigation, why we should do our knee replacements using computer navigation, and then we'll um, I'll show you a few examples in the end. So, um, as we see here, it's A, B, C, um, that's the, um, so it's A, B, C, A for alignment, B for balancing of soft tissues, and C for component orientation. So that's the easiest way to explain uh, how does computer navigation help you with the uh, surgeon. And we'll show you in the course of the talk how it, how it does help. So, um, if you see here, it's basically uh, based on your point base. That is, what you do, it's a triangulation technique from the computer by using infrared rays onto the patient and then from the patient back onto the computer. It's basically, this is a different method by which you have the point base and by also by using a surface registration and by morphing. That means basically, next slide. Basically, this is your triangulation technique. You have a computer in the operation theater which gives out the infrared rays which then goes on to this reflecting balls which is pressed, which is kept used by the surgeon or, and this is called as an array and that you use to get important points in the femur or tibia. Say for example in the femur, the medial epicondyle, the lateral epicondyle, on the tibial surface, say all the surface areas of the tibia. So you, this is called as morphing, that is you paint along the surface of the femur or the tibia and which is then transmitted back to the computer. computer. The computer has about 2000 or 3000 images and then it will be able to recognize which is the best image closest to the patient. Next slide. So, there was a lot of studies in the literature which looked at if you try to do knee replacements without uh, navigation and you find malalignment as, as a senior. Next. And um, there, were, there, was, there were a lot of studies which showed what is the benefits. Next. <coughs> so, if you look at this uh, kind of alignment, whether it, whether, it, uh, whether it really matters or not, there's been a lot of studies and uh, I don't want to go into the details of that because I think it's... Uh, it's, it's not in the realm of this talk. Next slide. So this is the uh, typical operation theater setup, and uh, this is me standing. I have the computer inside the theater, and the, those are the eyes of the computer. And um, so when I uh, morph the uh, from the uh, femur or tibia, that is then passed on to the computer's eyes, and which is then fed onto the screen. Next slide. So, um, so you see that you could, you could really adjust the height, adjust the angle, adjust everything of the eyes of the computer in order to, so that the arrays are seen. Next slide. So you put in two pins into the tibia, I put them outside the skin incision. The two pins in the femur are inside my skin incision. Next slide. And that is then the array. Like we have the array in the tibia is like a T-shape and the array in the femur is Y-shape. And these are the reflecting balls that you can see at the tip of your array. So what happens is that when I fix this, then I'm able to transmit the infrared rays that come from the eye onto the reflecting ball and then back into the eye, back into the computer. And I use the array to then fix it up. Next slide. So once this is done, next slide, you have to make sure that 
both the T and the Y is well with seen by the computer's eyes. Next slide. Both in flexion and in extension so that it is well seen and then the message is passed back to the computer. Next slide. Then of course, once I'm happy that the computer can read my knee, I, I have to make sure that the hip center is also seen by the computer. So I have to rotate the femur so that the hip center is seen, so that the computer now realizes that this is the knee joint of the patient, this is the center of the hip, and I've taken the points from the ankle, so it, it, it then is able to uh, pick up the closest image to the whole lower limb of the patient. Next slide. And this is called as morphing. Morphing is basically you take your array with the computer point and which is then taken all along the uh, surface of the important landmarks of the femur and tibia, which is then transmitted to the computer size. Next slide. And then once, uh, once the computer has then told you where to cut, and then you mark your jig, you have different, uh, different um, areas wherein you can adjust the jig, either forward, backward, upwards or downwards and then rotating it either inwards or outwards so that you get a perfect line from where you can cut. Next slide. So this is what I was trying to say that if the, com if the computer return show you the blue line, you have to adjust the array on the cutting jig so that you have to move the jig either up, down or inwards or outwards so that the yellow line and the blue line match each other. So the computer basically gives you uh, an accuracy of up to about one millimeter or up to about one degree accuracy. So we should not be trying to get to zero all the time, but as long as you're within one millimeter to about one degree accurate, accurate you will be able to uh, put the pins and then cut along the surface. And then once you've cut, you, are, you can again recheck by putting the cutting jig with the array on the cut surface, and again the computer will tell you whether it's, it's cut properly or not. So, Basically, it also helps you not only in the preoperative level, it also helps you during the surgical procedure to make sure that your cuts are absolutely perfect. Next slide. <clears throat> so once you have cut the tibia, then you go to the femur and then you again you morph out the femoral surface. Next slide. And then again, you see this is a wonderful slide which tells you that here there is tightness on the medial side. Say for example in a barrest deformity, that is, uh, you find that there is a tightness on the medial side. The computer tells you here the knee is opening out to about 11 degrees, on the medial side it's opening out to only 2 degrees. The joint gap is 0.1 and here the joint gap is 4.1. So that tells me that even before I make my cuts, that I have to go on the medial side, do my soft tissue release, release my capsule, release my deep MCL, and then I again recheck and make sure that this, um, uh, that, the, that, the, uh, that the joint gap is equal on both sides. So it helps me, we're going to the second help of the computer, that is balancing of the soft tissue. So it's not just important to just go and cut your bone, uh, bony surfaces and say I've done a knee replacement, no. The success of the knee replacement is basically on soft tissue balancing. And soft tissue balancing is, is one place where the computer helps you enormously by just look, uh, telling you in numerical figures that you're balancing on the medial side, on the lateral side, on the uh, ventral side, on the dorsal side, everything is perfect. And that's a very, very important uh, importance of the computer navigation when you do joint replacement. Next slide. So it again shows you the blue line which is the intended cut and the yellow line where we have to have it with a jig with your arrangement and then that will guide you. You as you move the jig up, it will say it will say one millimeter as you come down 0.5. So that means you have to keep moving your jig with the array so that the yellow line and the blue line is absolutely in 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 uh, is absolutely straight and all these figures will be within one millimeter or one degree so that you know that your you can go ahead with your bony cut. Next slide. So once your femoral surface and tibial surface is done, uh, your three fourth of your operation is over. Next slide. Because then it's just a matter of uh, adjusting your other jigs with the array and then taking out your chamfer cuts. Next slide. And this is your chamfer cuts being done. Next slide. And then 
This is, uh, this is another beautiful uh, portion of the computer navigation where it goes one step ahead and the latest computer navigation software also tells you what size of the implant you can use depending upon which company it is. So, it's, so, so it doesn't leave you with saying that it just helps you, the cuts helps you, the balancing, no. It also helps you in the component sizing. This is the third biggest help with the computer navigation. So it helps you to be guided where to put your component and whether to put your component medially, laterally or to where to place your tibia on your tibial surface. So it really helps you in every, uh, every uh, stage of the knee replacement. Next slide. And then finally with your trial reduction. Next slide. That's your prosthesis in place. Next slide. And your suturing now. Next slide. So you can see that it helps you with the A for the alignment, B for balancing of soft tissues, C for component fixation, that means a component orientation. So it helps you in all the three important stages. It helps you in the preoperative planning, it helps you during the surgery, and helps you to go back and recheck your steps. So that's very important. So I'll just show you a few cases. One patient who came, next slide. She has gross badass with the OA, next slide and uh, the knee replacement is being done. Next slide. And she, we usually mobilize them with a walker in the initial few, few weeks. Next slide. And this is a gentleman who came from Africa, 78 years old. Next slide. And I do a lot of bilateral knee replacements. I do them at the same time. I think it's, it's a very much, uh, uh, very much the, uh, the, uh, how you do it. Uh, especially if you talk to the Americans, they would say don't do bilateral knees beyond the age of 75. But this man was uh, was in a very good shape. Although he was 78, he, he was almost like 75. So we went ahead and did bilateral. Next slide. And here he is. Next slide. Next slide. I'll just show you quickly a few cases. Next slide. Again, you see the gross away with subluxations. Next slide. Bilateral knees being done. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. And uh, next slide. So you can see that next slide. So um, <coughs> next slide. Next slide. Next slide. And we start the step stair climbing up and down stairs, say within four weeks. Next slide. And you also, I wanted to make this point that even patients with very gross deformities, with a very gross genovalgum, with a gross genovalgum, this lady had almost 70 to 80 degrees genovalgum. Um, she lucky, lucky for her, her peroneal nerve was intact. Next slide. I used computer navigation for her. You can see she had an old tibial fracture, tibial condyle fracture, an old femoral condyle fracture treated conservatively in Nigeria. Next slide. And uh, I had to use computer navigation with a revision implant. Next slide. And you can see I had to use a stemmed implant here. Next slide. And with a base plate. And she did extremely well. So. Um, um, the computer navigation, besides just the knee replacement, has gone a long way in terms of not only in uh, knee replacements, it is very useful for hip resurfacing, for hip replacement, where it gives you the orientation of the cup, gives you the antiversion, it helps you with the um, sizing and replace, the resurfacing of your femoral head, it helps you in the revision of your components in both the femur, the astablum, and in the revision knee replacement situation. It has gone one step ahead and we also use it for trauma in polytrauma situations with astabular fractures and complex uh, fractures of the uh, patients. So I think uh, I don't want to um, um, uh, go any further with this but what I'm trying to say is that computer navigation has, has got a very important role um, and uh, just show you a few, next slide. Uh, just show you a few literature searches which are done and uh, not to bore you too much but uh, important studies that were done was uh, compared patients who had uh, done with the navigation one without the navigation in uh, bilateral cases next slide and they found that in that the mechanical axis was within three degrees that means your alignment your orientation was much better with the navigated patients than with those who were not navigated. And this was a landmark study where the p-value was quite significant. Next slide. And so the advantages of CAS, the take-home message here is a high precision of bony cuts, 